Ladies and gentlemen, this is more than a map. This is a story of two rivers who like true lovers have shared everything together. They have survived invasions and wars while sharing religions, arts and culture. And that's the reason why you are standing here today, textiles. Welcome to the Mekong Ganga Museum of Asian Traditional Textiles. So take a deep breath and get ready to time travel across six nations as we meet the amazing magicians who don't just weave cloth, they weave dreams. You don't believe me? Right now, the long fabric that drapes over the Mekong Ganga is unraveling, thread by thread. The highlight of this evening is a textile show presented by weavers and designers from all six Mekong Ganga countries. What a better place to start our journey from the Kingdom of Cambodia. One of the biggest symbols of Cambodia and the largest religious monuments in the world is Angkor Wat. Rising from the flood bank of the Mekong River, Angkor Wat was originally built as a Hindu temple dedicated to God Vishnu. Technically, everything was Hindu. But like in India, after Buddhism came in, here also some of the kings moved from Hinduism to Buddhism and back. So Angkor always remained a Hindu temple, but some of the other temples like Bayon and others became Buddhist temples and then again turned back into Hindu temples. There was a Chinese uh, author, a uh, person who came here and wrote a book in the 13th century. His name was Chou Dagwan. He wrote about the customs and manners of the people in this area. And one of the few things he wrote was the rich bought the textiles from India. These temples are the reflection of the stone craftsmanship because they are all done in stone. But even in, if they are done in stone, uh, all the sceneries, uh, the textiles are exhibited. The costumes and textiles are displayed there. And there is a lot of synergy between uh, the carvings of these temples and the textile costumes of that period and contemporary Cambodia. In downtown Phnom Penh, the capital of Cambodia, designer Romida Keat uses indigenous Khmer silk to accentuate her designs. First of all, I'm Cambodian and I'm um, very proud to be able to use our Cambodian silk again because it's been forgotten for years and, and now that it is back I'm very proud to be able to use it. What is special about Khmer silk is that it's imperfection. I like it. The fact that you know from a piece to another one it can be completely different. It's very surprising. And five uh, different um, uh, models because I want uh, and I wanted to choose in particular the red, the pink, fuchsia, fuchsia and orange. So this is an organza dress made of silk. This is the laser cut part. So it's been first laser cut and after applicated on the, the organza. All these details are applicated one by one on the dress. I wanted warm colors. I wanted silk and organza then of course to represent my country. This one is silk with um, satin applicated on. All those uh, applications have been cut by laser and all the leaves have been applicated one by one on the dress. And each dress has its particularity and I think it's, it shows what we can, what, what we're able to do. This is the orientation gallery because the Mekong Ganga is so vast one requires a little orientation. 
you get a glimpse of the centuries-old cultural connections between the Mekong and the Ganga winding and intertwining, warping and weaving into an intricate mesh. Legends, inaccuracies, myths and history. In the Mekong Ganga, they all live under the same roof. Let's move now to one of the most mysterious countries in the region, Laos. In the heart of bustling Indochina is a wonderland waiting to be discovered, Laos. Laos is a treasure trove of uncharted rivers, unclimbed mountains and untouched forests that house dozens of indigenous tribes and cultures. The people of Laos did not write down their history. They wove it instead. For the last 15 years, the social enterprise Ok Pop Tok or East Meets West has been striving to preserve the rich textile traditions of Laos. The women here that we work with, you know, they they're so proud of this skill that they have. I would say this is something that we've kind of fought with over the years. Lao is so rich in its cultural diversity and with that cultural diversity comes handicrafts and cultural, you know, traditional culture and, and those sort of things. And this is something that the women here are now starting to feel really proud of. They're the carriers of this culture. We not just selling textile. We give um, people education, like how the textile made, who made it, and you know, for one product, who get involved in eggs, every process, even you know, last part of the salesperson have to know, you know, how the uh, product made. It's the experience you get, and you then you feel like you get to know. Even you don't meet the the artists in person, but you feel like you know them, you know. Their collection for the fashion show embodies the spirit of modern Laos, a country rooted in tradition, yet ready to take on the world. <laughs> Our collection is based on folklore and mythological tales of Laos. The weaves reflect historical storylines, but the design has a very modern twist. Many countries in Southeast Asia, I believe, are uh, Naga um, or Water Serpent. I think one of the Buddha's lie that Naga had protecting from the from uh, flooded. So and that design have the big queen Naga motif with um, uh, traditional color red, but we we combine the color more um, more modern looking. Yeah, come with a shawl with a third eye uh, design. Does anybody know what this is? Um, I think it's a sari. That's right, and wrong. The world knows this as a sari, but for those who wear it and those who make it, it's six degrees of seduction hidden behind six yards of simplicity. But if you knew all that went into the making of a sari, you will fall in love with it. And this part of the museum, the Materials and Process Gallery, wants to do just that make you fall in love with textiles. 
fabrics, dyes, fibers, equipment, brocade looms and even a DIY or do-it-yourself block printing counter to learn new skills. It's all here so that you get deeper and deeper into understanding the craft. And here in the Vietnam section, there are detailed accounts on the role of women played in spearheading the textile movement for centuries. Even today, women lead the pack in Vietnam. There are 54 ethnic groups in Vietnam. The village of Mai Chau is made up of the ethnic group called White Thai. 400 years ago, this group moved to Vietnam, turning marshland into cultivable fields. Farmer by day and weaver by night. Miss Oan still weaves on her ancestral looms to make jacquard fabric. Enter Linda Mai Fung, the young and modern face of Vietnamese fashion. Well, when I first met them, I came to this uh, little traditional uh, Thai house and I discovered a community of uh, women that are very passionate about their own traditional textiles. And I immediately fell in love with how they work together and how they gather their forces together. This jacquard fabric is that it has been uh, made by generations of mothers and daughters inside this community, this ethnic group. And it's um, since, they told me it's in centuries that they use the same motifs and patterns. And it's even a skill and um, a craftsmanship that they learned before they learned to write or read actually. And also, it's only since 30 years that they use the traditional weaving machine. Before, they would just, just only do it by hand. Together, Linda and Miss Wan are creating an Asian collection called Shoot at the Moon for the Mekong Ganga Museum. I decided to work with them because uh, my new inspiration for this fashion show was the story of uh, it's an Asian legend a tale that tells the story of a couple made of an archer and how his wife which, who is a silk weaver actually and it tells the story of the apparition of the moon in middle uh, ancient times and at those times the moon was burning everything on earth so this couple they decided to shoot uh, with the, the bow they shoot arrows at the moon with uh, silk made with the, um, the work of his wife. And just when Linda was busy adding finishing touches to the collection, the weavers decided to have some fun. Ladies and gentlemen, let's play a little game. How long do you think this fabric must have taken to weave? Five days. No, I think two weeks. I think it's three days. Professor Gupta and Ms. Karia, what's the correct answer? So what do you think the right answer? It is completely handmade, so at, at least six months. Wow. Wow. Mm, I think. Really six months? Time and cloth wait for no man. Here, at the traditional textiles gallery, you get a glimpse of rare hand-woven pieces that are a calculated result of precision, talent and hard work. Did we say talent? It is time to travel to Thailand. Every year, thousands of visitors are drawn into one of the most exotic and enigmatic kingdoms on Earth. 
striking architecture, rich natural beauty and a kaleidoscope of color, this is Thailand. For the Thai people, if color means pride, then textiles are life's philosophy. Studio Naina in Chiang Mai specializes in blending tradition with modernity. More importantly, Studio Naina connects the traditional weaver with the international fashion market. Founded by Patricia Cheesman, the studio is reviving weft ikat, Thailand's ancient and intricate weaving technique. Weft ikat is a very important textile in Thailand. There aren't very many countries in the world that uh, make weft ikat and in Thailand it's done with great skill. So I was very interested in conserving this technique but also exploring its possibilities in fashion. One of the key fabrics, we were working with a lot of fabrics for this collection and one of the key fabrics that we are working with is a traditional ikat pattern but working in the silk and cotton blend fabric. So it, again, that is the connection between the past and also the present. Evidence in Thailand about 1600 BC of indigo being made in the northeast of Thailand. So with its long history and with its beauty, it is hard to, to resist it really. Um, and then the way that the color evolves as you oxidize it from the green up into the blue it's a it's a magical process what we are introducing is that this silk and cotton blend is a nice lightweight fabric and also has a very light colorway but using the traditional stripe ecat pattern with the indigo design indigo colors is a, a connection again connecting the past with the present with Patricia's, my mother's research, she has researched the past and we are creating textiles of the future. The initiative to set up the Mekong Ganga Museum came from former Prime Minister Atul Bihari Vajpayee in 2002. And the Cambodian government provided a beautiful piece of land for the same. Uh, we are talking about two civilizational rivers, the Mekong and the Ganga. And the people who lived around it build a life which where the fabric, the textiles, was the essence of the living. Uh, these two areas had something in common. One was that the peasants, the workers, the people who lived, naturally grew out of these two rivers. But the other was the great civilizational empires that was done. There in India, the great civilizations which was built around the Ganga, and here the great civilization of the Khmer Republic, of the Maison, of, the, of Myanmar, of Thailand, the great civilizations and what these two did was that when you have great civilizations you need great textiles the kings the emperors they have to wear textiles which are of a higher level than peasants whereas whereas the peasants had a different way of doing it they grew out of life itself so our work was to put these things together to bring together traditions which flowed across each other like seamless rivers these were rivers which actually did never meet together you know, the Mekong and Ganga have no confluence, but the people of the region had a confluence in that they moved seamlessly across each other. And finally, history meets happening in this part of the museum, the Contemporary Trends Gallery. Over here, it's all about stitching innovation with relevance. Like this costume from Myanmar, the fabric is made by native Kaya tribes, but the design is as modern as it gets. Myanmar's diverse ethnic groups have come to define its textile traditions. Weddings, funerals, births and festivals are all earmarked with a rare hand-woven piece, which are preserved by each passing generation. Designer Mo Home works closely with the lotus weavers of Inlay Lake, perhaps the only community in the world to make fabric out of the lotus flowers. We are talking about a freshwater lake where the way of transportation is boats. 
70,000 people survive on farming and fishing. Eight different ethnic groups in this area preserve the rich tradition of lotus weaving. The story goes that about a hundred years ago, a woman named Posar O discovered that if she cut the stem of a lotus plant, pulled them into halves, threads appeared. This is a great symbol for the possibility in life. Lotus thrives in the pristine waters of Inlay Lake and bright pink flowers indicate the best fibre. The time-consuming stripping of the stalk takes place when the stems are freshly picked. Many intricate and labour-intensive steps later, the thread is ready to be woven as fabric. My collection is rather simple. I have used the traditional lotus fabric and given it a very modern touch. Since this fashion show is about the power of six countries, I have used a lot of oriental inspiration in the design. An Indian kurta, a lotus fabric and very Myanmar ethnic designing. The collection from Myanmar also boasts of one more quality, healing powers, which make it the perfect fabric for the robes of Buddhist monks. Ladies and gentlemen, the final destination, India. India's textile story is the stuff of legends. The first account of hand-woven textiles dates back to the Indus Valley Civilization 4,000 years ago. Many centuries later, Indian textiles continue to capture the world's imagination. The Sambhya Sachi Collective stands for empowerment. Since its debut in the Indian fashion industry, the collective has aspired to revive Indian fabrics. Every Sabyasachi piece is created by skilled artisans working intimately with the designer. India is many countries within a country. So whether you go to north, west, east and south, the demographics of textiles in this country change quite rapidly and quite diversely and distinctly. So in Kashmir, you will have your woven pashminas. In uh, Gujarat, you are going to have your printed textiles and your ikats, like for instance the Patan Patola, which is one of the most supreme form of textiles probably anywhere in the world. In the east, when you come, you have fine hand looms like you have Banarsis and you have Jamdanis and then you go down to south you have the most stunning silks whether it's the Pochampaldi, whether it's the Kanchivaram Sari, uh, whether it's the Venkatgiris. So I, 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 think, uh, I think if you look at the textiles in India whether they are made up textiles which are embroidered or printed or they are dyed or they are just plain woven there is such distinct diversity. I don't think anywhere in the world you will not be able to find such an array of textiles. Well, you know what I've done for them is uh, two distinctive bangalas because I wanted to make something that was Indian but could also be worn by somebody who was not from an Indian country. And I thought the bangala is very Indian but at the same time it's like a Mandarin jacket and it has oriental influences. So I thought uh, it would be an appropriate garment to send. And I did the other jacket, uh, so the bangala was made with antique sequins and it was hand dyed, textured, hand embroidered and uh, used with a lot of prints and block printing that we did in West Bengal. The other jacket was hand textured, re-engineered with a lot of old stones, semi-precious stones, antique uh, zardozi. What we tried to do in both of them is we tried to show Indian handwoven fabrics, Indian dyeing and Indian hand embroidery which are the pillars of the garment industry in India. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the specially curated textile show for the Mekong Ganga Museum of Asian Traditional Textiles.
with special thanks to Ramida Kiat from Cambodia. People are still working with their hands, which is almost impossible everywhere else, except of course in India, people are very good with their hands and very talented. And in Europe, nobody is working with their hands anymore. More home from Myanmar. It's time that we show the world what we are capable of. The fact that there is so much synergy between us, the fact that together we have a rich history and culture and a very unique textile tradition. Ok Pop Talk from Laos. I love this idea of bringing six countries together. This speaks so much to my philosophy of, you know, strength in numbers. And so, not just bringing a small group of women together in Laos, bringing like different countries together and really putting like the spotlight on the handmade, on traditional culture. And so, yeah, and I think this is a brilliant idea. Patricia and Lamona Cheeseman from Thailand. I think this is a great collaboration of many different countries and to be able to present what is being created at present time of the best of the best in handwoven textiles and handicraft. Linda Mai Fung from Vietnam. I would love to work with other designers that think alike and maybe mix some techniques or styles together. Sabya Sachi Mukherjee from India. I would just like to say that, you know, as the world mechanizes, it is very, very important for us to sustain handicraft because others, otherwise we'll have no connection with the past and the world is going to become an extremely sterile place to live in. We have four galleries, the Orientation Gallery, Material Process Gallery, traditional textile and the last gallery is contemporary trends gallery. So this itself uh, talks of the symbiotic relationship between the tradition and contemporary. Prior to these borders being made, this whole area was an, uh, an area of, of flux and, and people were traveling and moving around and ideas were moving. So I think that uh, the connection between these six countries is very, very strong in their artistic uh, expressions.